Scotland side. Eight of them were in Italy with a World Cup squad. The odd men out being Boyd, Steve Nicol, who was injured, and Gordon Strachan, who returns to win his 44th cap, just three days off his 34th birthday. He's been out of the international scene since the World Cup qualified against France in Paris 16 months ago. And Ali McCoy starts a top-flight match for the first time since the 20th of November, earning his 30th cap after 11 consecutive appearances as a substitute for Rangers. The Soviet Union under new coach Anatoly Bishevets are rebuilding after their dreadful showing in the World Cup, so eight of that side are 24 or under, with the only survivors of Italy being Shalimov, Alenikov, Dobrovolsky and the goalkeeper Alexander Uvarov. At the age of 31, the Moscow Dynamo player has seized the chance to succeed the legendary Soviet keeper, Dasev. And look out, too, for Igor Dobrovolsky, an outstanding young left-sided attacking player who is shortly to start a career in Italy with Genoa. <laughs> Referee Peter Mikkelsen from Denmark, 32 years old, the fourth official in the World Cup final in Rome. So this fascinating White and Mackay International gets underway with the... Soviet side settling quickly and looking to play some passes around this high block surface. The crowd inside the stadium approaching the 20,000 mark, I would estimate. And in terms of friendly internationals on a bitterly cold evening, that's not such a bad crowd with plenty of noise coming from the Scottish fans early on. Golikovic playing it forward. Tackle there came from Steve Nicol, and he won the throw. This is McCall. Paul McStay in the middle of the field. Into space it goes for Fleck. Followed across by Zweber. Good running by Malpass. Cross retrieved there by Tom Boyd. Back with McCall. This is Nicol. The angle ball in again, looking for Malpass. Well won by Shalimov. Kulkov. Shalimov again, there's Tsveba. And calm defending there from the Soviets. Gyulakovic plays it forward, this is Kanchelskis. Alenikov, number seven, the most experienced international player in the Soviet side with 66 caps before tonight. Boyd's interception. McCoy's layoff, putting McCall under some pressure. Here's Dobrovolsky. And Chelsky's trying to reach the ball before the byline. And a headed opportunity there, passed up there, shut him off. Dobrovolsky. Goff to make the tackle. Well, menace there from the Soviets on the right flank. And some powerful running coming forward again. Sveba finding his way straight into the penalty area. Rob brilliantly there by Boyd. Boyd using that tremendous pace on the break for Scotland. Checking back now for support. He gets it from McCall. This is Steve Nicholl. Strachan with a roving commission across the Scottish midfield. Let's stay in space. This is Scotland captain, Richard Goff. Staging his eye off that, allowing Alenikov to make the challenge. So the Soviets playing with customary patience from their own half of the field. Here's Sveba. Kulikovic was a teammate of Maude McLeod when he was with Borussia Dortmund. So across it goes to the sweeper, Chernyshev. The Scots also quite content to funnel back and mark up tightly in midfield. Kielskis, Kielikovic. Well, it might have been an offside flag there against Guran, but the linesman content to allow Scotland to have the throw. So here's Steve Nicol. 
missed a lot of Scotland matches through injury, Nicol. More than six years since he made his international debut against Yugoslavia, winning his 25th cap on the tonight. Followed by Alenikov on McCall. So back with Steve Nicol. Strachan coming off of Lenikov. Here's Malpass, seen plenty of the ball early on. And trying to test Uberov from long range. Boris Malpass still looking for his first goal in Scotland colours. Winning his 40th cap tonight. Saw that long range shooting chance. The keeper had it covered. Chernyshov to Zveba. This is normal for the Soviet side. They play with tremendous patience from their own half and then try to explode in the final third of the field, but they haven't the chance this time with Scotland in possession, although they've lost it now. The Soviets coming forward. There's Mostovoy forward, Yuran. And Sharanov stumbling there, allowing Malpass to step in. So Fleck very carefully marked there. So it's Robert Fleck trying to team up again with Ali McCoyst, who was his striking partner so frequently for Rangers before his move to Norwich City. Stay playing it forward. So the Soviets playing with three men in central defence. Kulkov and Sveber on the markers with Chernyshov, the spare man, the sweeper. This is Dobrovolsky. So the Soviet side, the first to depart from the World Cup finals in Italy, and they've now resorted to a brand new setup, using a number of players who were in the under-21 side, which won the European Championships. Iran coming forward, and again some good defending. Alpha stepping in. Scotland certainly not lacking for experience in their back four. Alpha seeing plenty of the ball. the central defensive pairing 75th international this for Alec McLeish it's his mixed day setting it up for Strachan to return the pass there's Fleck and the goalkeeper has to collect that he would have gone for a corner Robert Fleck still looking for his first goal in Scotland colours Getting a call there to play that on towards McStay. It's back with McLeish. Goff playing it across to Malpass. Here's Gordon Strachan. Excellent pass, picking out Fleck. Malpass again. McCall calling for the ball in the middle of the field. That was for Strachan. Fine play this from Scotland. Strachan going all the way himself. Superb positioning by Uberall from the Soviet goal. Gordon Strachan making an early impact in the proceedings, taking that magnificent pass from Malpass, sidestepping his man, and the keeper made that look easy. Nichols headed away. Dobrovolsky going in behind him. Boyd was trying to keep the ball in play. So it's the fourth international match between these two countries, and Scotland still looking for their first victory. Lost by two goals to Hamden in 1967, then by one goal to nil in Moscow in 71 and Scotland scored their first goals against the Soviets in 1982 in Malaga in the World Cup 2-2 to draw, goals from Joe Jordan and Graham Simmons for Boyd back to Nicol there's McCoyst Stuart McCall Strachan finding space again he's doing that brilliantly in the early stages of the match Developing a good understanding too with Malpass. 
Here's McStay. McCall has the holding role in front of the back four for Scotland in midfield. Nicol has Boyd ahead and also has McCoy trying to turn. Cut by Gulakovic. So a free kick to Scotland. McCoy is none the worse. The free kick will be dictated by Gordon Strachan. Strachan in charge of all these Scottish set pieces. Using his vast experience. Boyd has gone across the middle of the field. This is for Nicol. Well, there was an opening there for Steve Nicol. He'll be very disappointed with that. Looking forward to this chance to reassert himself in Scotland colours after missing so many matches through injury. Kuvarov will leave the goal kick to Andre Chernyshev. He club teammate of his at Moscow Dynamo. Well won by golf. Boyce getting up well, but no one wide on the right there for Scotland. Duran couldn't reach that. So it's a very interesting setup this from Scotland with Flack and McCoy, the principal strikers. But Strachan giving the giving the license to Rome just behind them. Try to provide that quality service they will be seeking. They'll shut him off. Hustled there by Malpass. Misjudged in the earlier by Boyd, who didn't get on the end of that, but Boyce is caught again by Golakovic. Well, the Borussia Dortmund defender making a mark on Ali McCoy once again. Nickel into the gap for Boyd. This is promising for Scotland. Driven ball towards Strachan. The layoff was for McStay. It was well read by Kulkov. Retrieved again by Strachan. This is Malpass. Fleck coming off his marker. Stay at full stretch there, heading for the ball before the Soviet defender. Shall him off again. Lost the boy has found space. He's in behind the Scottish defence. The challenge there came from Goff. Very timely one at that. It was a little bit alarming from the Scottish point of view, the way Lost the boy found that space on the left. Just Strachan. Back it goes to Malpass. Tom Boyd has switched positions with Nickel for the moment. The dummy came from McCoy, great understanding there with Fleck. And Strachan trying to take advantage of that error from Kulkov. And Strachan involved again, but some fine inventive play there involving McCoy and Fleck up front. Obrovolsky lays it back, Shalomov comes across field. Golakovic. Well pass to Strachan. McCoy's coming off today, but this is mixed day. Strachan has Malpass available wide on the right. Scotland then shooting. They always have plenty of width. Here's Paul McStay. Nicole providing that width on the left. Into the gap it goes to McCoy. Trying a turn there against Weber. Soviet defender standing up well to that good turn from McCoy. Mostovoy, Sveba. The Soviets having a very good start too in the European Championships. A 2 0 victory against Norway, followed by. A no-scoring draw in the Olympic Stadium in Rome against Italy. As Elio Vicini, Italian manager, is here to watch them again. Goro makes his first catch of the match. 14 minutes gone before Goro had to become involved for Scotland. They've 
Well, he didn't take the match from the start. There's Boyd. Taking too long about releasing the pass. Alenikov made the challenge. Chernyshov and Sveba. On the far side, Shalimov. Dobrovolsky playing very deep at the moment for the Soviets. First to do his good work in the opposing half, but concerned perhaps about the way the game is running at the moment with Scotland enjoying a lot of possession. That's what the Soviets are trying to rectify right now. McCoy still allows Chernyshov the turn. Scottish supporters not appreciating this play from the Soviets. Good pass in the end, though, picking out Shalimov. Alenikov. Good hair back, that by Nickel, showing excellent awareness. Knew exactly where his teammates were. Say back to Goff. These players earning their 51st caps tonight. Like to McCoist. Misunderstanding there, Malpass expected a run to the flank by McCoist, which didn't materialise. This is Alenikov, arrived only last evening from Italy, Alenikov, after some visa difficulties. Another place for Lecce after being released by Juventus last summer. Golakovic. Getting moved ahead. The attacker from the rear was by McLeish. Well, they couldn't hope to escape punishment for that. Yuran felt the brunt of it. 21 year old Dinamo Kiev striker. That's the boy back to Chernyshov. Dornikovic. Well judged by Goff in the air. Alenikov holding the middle of the field for the Soviets. Alenikov once again. And the offside flag catches out Mostovoy. Mostovoy winning only his fifth cap this evening. One of the young hopes of the Soviet coach, Anatoly Bishevitz. Here's Nickel. Well, that's good play away from Dobrovolsky. He may go through the gap himself now. Dobrovolsky spotted the danger. Nickel trying to use Boyd behind him. Scottish throw. So Boyd now requires some movement from teammates. Fleck provides it inside. Kovic sends it out again for the Scottish throw. Well, no height in the Scottish attack. McCoy and Fleck not renowned for their aerial ability. So a long throw from Boyd for a header on was not really appropriate. There's Strachan trying to go through the inside left channel. The danger spotted by Alenikov. So the two number sevens, Gordon Strachan and Sergei Alenikov, have had a major impact in the proceedings so far. Commanding play again by Goff. Here's McCoyst. Next day has McCall going through the middle. Boyd on the left. Next day now has Nickel available also. Looking to pick up Strachan. Alpice trying to go on the overlap. Good play again from Strachan. Here's McCall. Target there was Malpass, but a break is on for the Soviets now. Sending a lot of players forward supporting this attack. Shalimov 
he stopped in his tracks. And then took a late tackle from Stuart McCall. So Shalimov recovers quickly. Spartak Moscow player. Mostovoy trying to hold off Goff. Here's McCall. Nicholas going charging forward on the left. A good run though made by Fleck to the right. Excellent timing there, and that tackle from Golakovic had gone across to cover. There's a very interesting pattern developing on the Scottish left where Boyd and Nicholl are interchanging positions regularly. Both very comfortable at both left back and left midfield. Challenged by McCoy. Well, that move wasn't read by Nicholl. This is Alenikov. Now 29 years old. Kulkov. Golakovic. Mostovoy. Good possession play again from the Soviets. They're doing well with that tackle in the field on Dobrovolsky. Alenikov again. Chelsky is going forward, allowing the target for Yuran. Steve Nickel doing well, keeping his head and looking to play football from that defensive position. This is Paul McStay. Layoff from Fleck, there's McCoy trying to find Boyd. Pass was overhit though by McCoy. Well, Tom Boyd, centre of a great deal of interest this evening at Ibrox. A number of English managers in the stand realising that Boyd's contract expired at the end of the season at Motherwell. Goss pass picked up by Strachan. Again, McCoy's took up good position. Nickel reacts to the instruction from Strachan to use Boyd. The layoff to Strachan. Fine play again from Scotland, and Strachan is pulling all his strings in the middle of the field. It was Strachan who carried that ball to Boyd. The layoff there came from Fleck, the first time shot from Strachan. Fine return is made to international duty. Goff and McLeish winning everything in the air at the back for Scotland. Here's Strachan again, hungry for possession. Out pass for the return pass. Kulkoff is going to cross. Here's Paul McStay. Well, the back killer was aimed for Malpass. Shalamov did well for the Soviets. Very dangerous now on the break. This is Mostovoy. A lot of Soviet players in support. One of them is Kanchelski. Scott and other players back in defensive positions. They've been allowed to regroup. The emphasis has gone from the Soviet attack. They'll have to create something again. Yuran trying to get away from McLeish. No problems there for the Scottish defence. They are a superb counter-attacking side, the Soviets, and Sergei Yuran will be a key man from these explosive breaks from midfield. Well pass, looking for McCoyst. Golakovic, beaten there by McCoyst. An offered one for Uberov, but a very experienced and confident goalkeeper. Boyce is very busy indeed up front for Scotland, beside Robert Fleck. And a poor kick out there by Overoff. Goals header, knocked back by Boyd for Nicol. McCall. Boyd hugging the left touchline, using Nicol as a decoy. 
reacting to the call there from McStay. That's from Alpas. Taking on Shalimov for the run. An awkward run for the keeper. Well, not happy to try to catch that Uberov. Certainly was effective. There's Kanchowski. Misunderstanding there involving Mostovoy and Dobrovolsky. And that allows Scotland to build again from the back. Nichols' early pass giving Boyd time to control the ball and that time he was more under pressure. No one in the gap ahead. Here's Alinikov. Shalimov to Kulkov. Dobrovolsky stealing into an offside position. Dobrovolsky trying to play much further forward now for the Soviet side. Well, pass playing it through the middle. McCall had made a very good run. There's Boyd. Well, left that for McStay, but McStay didn't realize that. Golikovic has crossed again back to the right flank in defence for Soviet Union. Here's Dobrovolsky. Duran trying to take on McLeish. There's Gordon Strachan. Toys looking for support. Day breaking forward, but Shalimov's challenge is enough to force the error from McStay. Zveva plays it across. Intended, I think, for Golikovic, who has it now, courtesy of Kanchelski. That's good play from Goff. Goff has gone forward to support this attack. Boyd's in possession. Here's Richard Goff. Finding Boyd again. The attack breaks down with Richard Goff caught up field. He's back already, though. Stuart McCall, you'll notice there, making certain that he filled the gap vacated by Goff when he went on that forward run. Delaney Goff. Demanding the ball from his defensive players. Uh, pass his header. Goff to Gorham. Andy Gorham has a precious little to do in the match so far. Uberoff, the busier goalkeeper, although chances few and far between in the match so far. Some very organised defending at both ends. Well, pass to Fleck. No way through that gap for Robert Fleck. Dobrovolsky. Mostovoy. Over on the far side. Shalimov. Kulkov rather trying to find a way forward to use Shalimov on the left touch line. Dobrovolsky. Now trying to test Andy Gordon from long range. Dobrovolsky, if he has a criticism, is that he's a little bit greedy sometimes his run of goal, winning his 23rd cap this evening. Reacts to the call from next day. Now Steve Nichol. Movement offered by Fleck. McStay looking for the gap ahead. This is a good play by Paul McStay. Final pass once again, though, the problem. Scotland have looked posed and impressive but the final pass has not yet been telling enough Sveva has been penalized for a high tackle on Morris Malpass he went in late so it's Sveva is back as the free kick is taken quickly by Strachan here's McCoist back towards Strachan eased away from that 
by Kukov. And this time the free kick is to the Soviet Union for the tackle by Paul McStay. So the free kick taken quickly as Mostovoy recovers. That's Weber. Hurried into that pass, but it's a good one. Shalimov trying to take on Malpass. Here's Dobrovolsky. Faced now by Goff. Dobrovolsky prefers to operate on his left foot. That was forced in the English squad. There's Mostovoy going down in dramatic fashion. And referee Mikkelsen not interested in that attempt by Mostovoy to win a penalty kick. Well, this will be very interesting indeed. There was Mostovoy and a very dramatic fall, clearly designed to deceive the referee. Pass from Strachan, held up by Fleck. We've had half an hour of the match, and Scotland having slightly the better of exchanges at this point in the match, but Soviets still looking immensely dangerous when they break from the other half quickly. Nicole to McLeish, wearing that unfamiliar number six for Scotland. McCall leaves that to Boyd. Clichy return pass, good play from Boyd. Gap opened up by the run made by McCoy. Disappointed with that final shot, he really has a lot of power in that right foot. It was all set up there by the run off the ball made by Ali McCoy. Goff's header, gets a second chance to find McCall. There's Boyd, Nickel coming up quickly on the left. Ball played in low and early. Good play by McStay. Here's McCoy. for the pass, the first time shot, parry there by Uberoff. Corner kick, taken by Strachan. An attempt to find McLeish at the near post. Pass from McCall, very accurate indeed, to find Strachan. Here's Fleck, Strachan again. Now McCoy for the dummy, no one coming in behind him. But once again, Gordon Strachan was at the heart of all these little passes around the penalty area. Dobrovolsky. Kulkov has moved from his defensive marking job forward. Here Dobrovolsky again. There's no offside, Malpass was hopeful, he had a chance now of the Soviets to shut him off! the best chance of the match so far Scotland almost punished there but looking for an offside flag and the menace of the Soviets clear there it was Shalamov's pass which he then supported Yuran returned it there was Shalamov with a, an open opportunity Goram going down to his left well there's no question that this is an opportunity which Shalamov will feel he should have taken Goram certainly spread himself well Steve Nicholl. That's all. Trying a quick one-two there with Fleck, but the defensive play was excellent from the Soviets. There is McLeish and now Paul McStay. Nicholl offering an option inside. Malpass wants the ball played via Richard Goff across to the right. Strachan offers himself again, a great little dummy, the interchange there with Fleck. And the early cross again, you'll note all the 
crosses from the Scots coming in early from the flanks and all have played in low. No attempt to play high balls towards McCoy. He's flanked with such tall defenders. Now there's the experience of Alenikov as he just made space for himself there. A little nudge. And a yard, but Nicol turns it back for Gorham. Off towards Fleck, greatly off once again. Here's Strachan. This is for McCoyst. Very well marked there by Gorakovic. But a fine move from the middle of the field for the Scots again. It took top quality defending to break that down. There's Malpass. Caught Strachan in his heels that time. Here's Uran. Dobrovolsky coming up to the middle, here's Dobrovolsky. Shalamov appears on the left. Sobis has four men in the box now. Dobrovolsky's one of them, here's Kanchelski. And what an excellent block that was from Steve Nichol. Kanchelski looking for a shooting chance there. He's scored only once so far in his career for the Soviets. But look at the way Nichol closes him down. So the corner kick for the Soviets. And all the Soviet players hovering around the 18-yard line, none on the goal line, they're on the near post. This really is unusual in British terms. It's Dobrovolsky who will take the corner. Punched away by Conan, that was good goalkeeping. There's Golikovic. with the sweeper, Janishov. This is Tveba. Dobrovolsky. Uh, so it's interchange positions brilliantly, but Fleck did well. He was then fouled by the Soviet skipper. Fleck doing well defensively there for Scotland. Goff to Nickel. Boyd using Alec McLeish. Well, Scotland certainly playing in a patient, modern fashion at international level. That was well read by Kulkov. He knew exactly what Strachan intended. This is Shalimov. McLeish comes to win it for Scotland. Here's Paul McStay. Now McCall, striking again, has found space. Reacts to the call there from Malpass. Good positioning there by Goff to make that much easier for Malpass. Oh, well judged by McCoy, he's away from Sveva. Kulkov with a cross. Up goes Tom Boyd. Excellent goalkeeping by Uberoff. He made that look very easy indeed, and it certainly wasn't. But a well-constructed move once again from Scotland. They have to defend now as Shalimov breaks on the left. Making for the byline. And superb handling by Andy Gorham. He hasn't had a great deal to do, Gorham. Everything he's done has been done with complete conviction. Back it goes from Malpass. Well, a lot of quality football on display this evening from both sides. Scotland has certainly contributed in a very encouraging way. Pass intercepted well by Gonikovic, but it's Blank who picks out Boyd. Stuart McCall, headed away by Alenikov. Here's Mostovoy, only Uran up front at the moment. Here's Alenikov supporting. Dobrovolsky coming up, so is Kanchelski's on the right. Fine play by Goff. Space now for McCall to exploit for Scotland. Fleck on the right, McCoy's through the middle. Boyd on the left. Strachan coming in a deep position on the right. 
Hawkins crossed, looking for Tom Boyd. Well, the angle wasn't quite right, but Boyd certainly has been invited by the Scotland coach Andy Robson to get into the penalty box, whatever he can for crosses from the right. Lady off again, demanding the ball in the middle of the field for the Soviets. Kulkov back to Tsveba. Jolikovic. Dombrovolsky being hustled now by McStay. Mr. Hoy in turn being challenged by Nicol. This is Kinshelski with McLeish. Fine cross that. Duran still has possession for the Soviets. Kanchelski now has support inside from Dobrovolsky. And Dobrovolsky trying to find a way through that pack defence. Here's Kanchelski. And is turned away by McLeish. Dobrovolsky complaining there to referee Mickelton. He thinks he was impeded as he tried to go through the Scottish defence. The referee disagreed. Once again, the Soviets line up on the 18-yard line for this corner kick. Skipper Dobrovolsky will take it, and immediately movement starts from the Soviets towards the goal line. Fleck back defending, every Scot's been back in defence. For the forward player was Strachan there. Good play from Fleck, here's Boyd and Malpass. Supporters not entirely happy the ball was played backwards there by Malpass. Nickel. Goff. The call has made a run through the inside left channel. He's a target there for McStay, but he did a bit of pushing there to gain an advantage on Alenikov. The call very dangerous making those runs from deep positions. Lenikov, so experienced and so composed in the middle of the field for the Soviets. Uberov waves his defenders forward. He wants to play the long ball upfield. It's a much better kick out from the Soviet keeper. The only weakness he really has shown so far is his kicking ability. Very high kick there by Tveba. Certainly with little Gordon Strachan around, it looked very high indeed. So the free kick has been given by referee Mikkelsen. Tveba and his marking duties again on McCoist. Strachan's free kick, stumbled at the edge of the area there by Goff, there's Tom Boyd, working hard to keep the shot down, very easy to balloon one of those over the bar, but the free kick was interesting, the stumble there by Goff, no foul of course, and there was Tom Boyd, just queuing the shot. by McLeish. The sweeper is there, Chernyshov. Just 23 years old, Moscow Dynamo defender. Kulkov plays it forward, Sveva now to Alenikov. This is Gornikovic. Janishov across to Kulkov. A lot of those Soviet players have been together for a long time through the under-21 side. They were together in the Olympics in Seoul, which they won. And the 
with some help from men like our lady cop who's 29 and Rodakovic who's the same age being formed into a formidable lineup by Anatoly Bishovets the new Russian coach back with Kulkov Dobrovolsky's layoff here's Alenikov Sveber to Golikovic Golikovic forward and Duran trying to find space at the edge of the box he's menacing the young striker here's Dobrovolsky running straight into Goff still has possession though and Goff recovers the Scots had to be at their best to cope with that attack from the Soviets. Yuran doing well initially, then it was Dobrovolsky, who was tackled first of all by Goff, who made that good recovery to concede the corner. Lost boy with the corner. Moving ball to the edge of the box, a good ball in by Kanchelskis. It was picked up by Malpass. So we're at the end of a very interesting and entertaining first half. Some excellent midfield play, difficulty in creating chances, the best provided by the pass from Paul McStay, which allowed Ali McCoy to bring out an excellent save from Uberov. But on the other hand, Shalamov missed one excellent opportunity for the Soviets. And half-time at Ibrox, it's Scotland nil, the Soviets...